Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, welcome back to Stellaris, because we've just picked up a brand new species pack, the Toxoids, and uh, you know what, went into this assuming it's a species pack, we're going to get, you know, some nice portraits, couple of origins, some new civics and traits, just hoping to add a bit of replayability to Stellaris, but no, because they have just added in the most ridiculously powerful empire in the game, and today I'm going to show you just how ludicrous one of the new origins is. You see, we get ourselves two new origins with this species pack. Knights of the Toxic God, you just get yourself a nice little story, couple of different jobs, nice enough, nothing too fancy. Unlike what's sitting next door. So, Overtune. This civilization uses any and all means of organic enhancement, no matter the risk, no matter the cost. Meaning, basically, yes, you can start gene tailoring straight away, but on top of that, you've got access to unique Overtune traits. Extremely powerful benefits that come with some downsides. And on top of that, on top of that, you've got an edict that lets you take those already stupidly powerful traits and make them even stronger. And there are a lot, but, 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 but. Here's what I'm thinking about today. I'm thinking about pop growth. Because ultimately, pops win you the game. Alright, pops do everything. Planets are the powerhouses of your empire, and pops are the people that actually make things happen on your planets. So, the faster you can grow new pops, the better. Up till now, Rapid Breeders has been one of the best traits in the game. And that only gives you a 10% boost to population growth. And that's so good, it costs two trait points. But we don't need that anymore. You see, overtuned empires can take pre-planned growth. 30% to population growth speed, which is ludicrous. And just toss in a reduction to pop housing usage on top of that. Brilliant. Spectacular. The downside is leader lifespan. And most of these perks impact your leaders. They're going to die young. So you're going to have 10 million pops, but your leaders are going to be dropping like flies. But don't worry, I've got a plan for that. Oh, and we're not done yet either, because we can also take incubators. This isn't even an overtune trait, this is just a new general trait. So between 30% or minus 10% to pop growth speed, depending on how many people are on the planet. Meaning when you start a new colony, it's just going to get 30% growth boost. Alright, a ridiculous dumb amount right there. Now absolutely, the 10% minus when you are on a very crowded planet, that's bad. But again, we can work around that. The priority today is just to build an empire that can grow ridiculously. Dumb levels are fast. And to do that, we're going to need to expand everywhere. So, habitability, here we go. This is another overtune trait, plus 20%. Again, we're kind of knackering the lifespan of our leaders, but that's fine. We'll replace them. It's not a problem. In fact, I don't care so much. Yes, I've also taken slow learners, because it doesn't really matter that my leaders aren't leveling up fast, given they're going to die of old age in their 30s or something. But here's how we're going to compensate for that. I'm playing as a hive mind. And the ruler of a hive mind can't die. That just means the one ruler, not all leaders. They can still die, but in a hive mind, people start working a lot younger. Like, in a normal empire, your leaders are going to be like, you know, not starting till their 20s or 30s at the earliest. In a hive mind, because, you know, they've just been spawned out the spawning pool, ready to go, so I can still get a good bit of useful life out of them. On top of that, all hive minds just come with a bonus 25% to pop growth speed, so we're just doubling down on that ridiculous growth rate, and because we are going to be expanding fast and wide, empire size effect down 25%. So we don't need to worry about causing inefficiency by expanding too fast. And on top of that, on top of that, divided attention. Empire size from planets down by 50%. And we are going to be expanding everywhere because newly settled planets are going to be the engines of our population growth. And on top of that, yet more to habitability. Doesn't matter what the climate is, we're going down there, we're going to sort it out. And you put all that together, this empire is something truly ridiculous. 
ridiculous to see in action. Oh, and before I forget, there are some lovely portraits. So, I like this one in particular, where it's pretty clear this guy just hasn't filled up his bowl correctly, but now he's too embarrassed to admit it out loud. There's also Tiny Goblin, like him and his giant head. Then we've got Coral, wearing power armor. He's pretty good too. In fact, yeah, there's a whole bunch of really good ones. Giant uh, fume spewing robot, he's nice as well. But yes, I can't turn down a literal person in a vat. Alright, he's just too cute not to take. So, welcome to my home world of Spawn, and yes, yeah, starting right now, start date January 1st, things are gonna start growing fast. Because base growth, plus 1.5 from Pops, that's the main new function of housing being available. So yes, we need to make sure we're building plenty of hives. But then on top of that, hive mind, that's just your blank 25%, we're always gonna get that. Pre-planned growth, boosting that already to over double with 30% and all of this. This is with incubators only at 4% because the population here is already pretty large. So the incubators aren't going to be doing much. So what we need to be doing is expanding. So the sign ships are going straight out into the world and I'm immediately building another one. But we're only just getting started. Alright, move time on. A single month and something beautiful is going to happen. With 14 unity in the bank, we can turn on down the consequences immediately. And it's cheap. So I can just fund that being on right now and keep it on forever. But bloody hell this is... This is interesting. So, basically, those yellow super perks, they are now twice as good as they were. But they're also twice as bad as they were. And on top of that, organic pop-up keep goes at plus 100%. Now, that's not going to update, like, uh, in the little tracker at the top until we get to uh, next month. So if we just, uh, yes, quickly accelerate into March here. Yes, so um, everybody's now hungry. This is another reason why this new origin syncs up so nicely with hive minds. Because hive minds, what they need is relatively simple. They don't care about consumer goods. We don't need to be producing that, which is good. Because those aren't difficult and expensive to produce. All they really need is food. The hive is hungry. So as a result of that, we just need to go and find new places to drop down on to get new food going on in a bloody hurry. But we can just keep ourselves going by building a new farming district. And in the interim, while we save up for that, yeah. Food is super cheap to buy on the market, so we're going to be taking a bit of a temporary hit right here. But it doesn't really matter, because the benefit is just so good. Like, let's just uh, move over here. Okay, so it's now only 11 months away from a new pop, because uh, now we're getting a bonus 60%. Oh, this is... This is beautiful right here. Also, like, the spawning pool is producing a pop too, but that's not going to be done for, like, four or five years, so I kind of don't care. It's fine. That's just pretty much irrelevant because we're just growing normal pops so bloody fast. New science ship pops out too, and this here is another reason why, yes, we want to be doing this with hive minds. Look at the ages right here. The new scientist we can pop in, this guy is only 14 right now because hive people pop out of the spawning pool ready to go. As an interim, of course, yes, you can just change your production policy as a hive mind, so given I'm not seeing any immediate planets that are conveniently nearby, yeah, I'm going to shift over to extraction focus. So my menial drones, the ones producing food, minerals, etc., they're going to be producing more at a cost of a little bit less unity, a bit less alloy, etc., etc. It's probably going to be worth it for the time being. Just tide me over because, yeah, we got one farm coming in momentarily. That's going to be done in a moment. And on top of that, yes, we got more and more people coming in too. Okay, we're still, we're still losing a fair bit of food. I'm sure it's all going to be fine in the long run. If you're not familiar with hives, by the way, they are very similar to a normal empire in all sorts of ways. So, uh, you mean your drones are just doing the same stuff as always? Uh, your farmers, your miners, etc. And your complex drones are very similar too. Your brain drones are, are just your researchers. Your foundry drones are... Guess what they do? Hunter Seeker, that's your police. Your Synapse drones are... They're the ones producing your unity. Oh, now this is what I wanted to see. Just two jumps over. We've got ourselves a, a Tundra World. Need to scan it before we can learn anything about it. But 
It looks pretty bloody big to me. Yep, 24. That's nice. Now, I am not Tundra. Absolutely not. But I've been doing an awful, awful lot to make my people capable of going basically anywhere I choose. After all, my empire gives me bonus 5 to habitability, and my people gain 20% bonus to habitability multiplied by 2. So, oh yeah, I think we're going to do just fine on that cold planet. And yes, while I would normally prioritize discovery over everything at the start of the game, not for this empire. For this empire, we are straight into expansion. Colony development, 25%, just for starting this tree, and... Uh, Oh yeah, we got ourselves all sorts of good stuff here. New pops showing up straight away. Another 10% to pop growth speed. Now that, that's worth doing right there. Oh yeah, look at that. This Tundra World, 65% habitability. Even though I have taken no habitability tax whatsoever. Like, in the early mid game, with just a couple of tanks, my pops are going to be able to go down onto... Any world whatsoever in the galaxy with near enough no penalties whatsoever. This is going to be beautiful. Okay, this is just a wild coincidence, but we've also got a two-planet system right by my starting point, and one of them is a tropical world. Now, I actually disable nearby friendly planet spawns because I prefer the galaxy to be completely random, but today the game's just decided to play ball with me, so... We're going in. Oh, flip me. Absolutely. Though, have my first colony ship out too. Just uh, zoom in here. This is the Toxoid colony ship. It's got, yes, giant barrels of toxic goo just stuck to the outside of it. Oh, that does remind me, by the way. You might be wondering, um, John, why didn't you start in a toxic world? Uh, being as this is, you know, the Toxoid species pack. You can't, which is a bit odd, but we are where we are. Both of the toxic starts and all the toxic portraits, they have to start on normal worlds. Though we have gained the detox ascension perk, so now you can turn a toxic world into a just mostly toxic world. But apparently, even for a toxoid, yeah, the toxic worlds are a bit too much. Oh, and of course, don't forget, various society research is going to help us out with growing as well. We're not even close. To reaching the maximum that we can hit. Oh, and speaking of which, a spawning frenzy. Let's have another 10%. Because why not, I say bloody hell, what is going on down on this planet? Because as soon as the colonists get down, oh, it's going to be beautiful. And you know what's going to be even more beautiful, by the way? Which is, the other planet has an aphrodisiac atmosphere. Habitability, another 5%. And growth, Another 10% again. This is slightly ridiculous and I love it. Oh, here we go. The colony is down. The great farm is ready to go. And, uh, oh, this is going to be... This is going to be slightly ludicrous, actually. Here we go. Brand new world. No infrastructure here whatsoever. And what we are seeing is, uh, yes, a new pop showing up in... 15 months. Hive mind, 25%, 10%. That was from the, uh, yes, the traditions. Planet habitability is slowing things down by 17%. The incubators are now going full blast because, uh, yep, 30%. Brilliant. The planet's empty. Pre plan growth now at 60%. And people are also migrating out here. Okay, now things all start coming together here, which is. Uh, on the Great Farm, the Tundra World, we now need to, yes, make sure we're setting our designation correctly. This is going to be an agri world. We're going to be doing a whole lot of farming in this place. As a result of that, yes, we can now get uh, more food out of this place and we can build agricultural districts even faster too. Oh, and here we go. First contact has just occurred. Somehow we've become aware of some stuff over here, but more importantly... Somebody is doing some beautiful, beautiful scanning near my borders. That is the humanoid-style ship, I believe. I could attempt to race them to this system, but I'm going to be honest, I don't really see it as uh, worth the trouble. It's a pretty small system, so... Okay, you just keep expanding over here, and yes, we may as well start somebody communicating with these lads, see if they're gonna be friendly or not, but, um... 
just in case they're not. How about we get a bit of a, an upgrade going for this here starport, given this is where, yes, I've actually got two planets any moment now. So that seems useful, yes. Okay, we made contact with the lads down over here, and now I understand why there were three signals for the price of one. They appear to be, yes, connected together. This is probably either, yeah, the origin where they're all in a federation, or the origin where one of them's the overlord and they start with two tiny vassals. Hard to say until we've gathered a bit more information. The only slight issue being, yes, even new agri worlds, just because they've got themselves a uh, yeah, synapse drones and some basic maintenance drones uh, just to keep the absolute basics running. Yeah, they're currently eating their own food supply. They're pretty much food neutral. So they need to get up to a certain size uh, before they start feeding the wider empire. Which is fine, to be honest, because uh, it's only going to take them like a few years uh, before they are swimming in farmers. And you know what's really going to help with that? Agrarian upbringing Governors, right, let's get you into position, buddy. You can control the territory of spawn. Oh yeah, there we go. Food actually not in the red for once. I love it. Oh, it took long enough, but yes, we have finally had someone die. They died at the age of 41, but I think they started working at about like 8. So regardless, we got a good run out of them. Okay, so... Good news and bad news. The good news is uh, we've expanded and taken a good amount of territory and just look at all these planets around here. Like, we've been seriously lucky and uh, I could actually go down onto a tomb world uh, if I wanted to. Don't need to, would be expensive, uh, not necessary. And uh, despite everything, the economy is looking okay. Fine, it is uh, very difficult to keep up with food uh, because uh, at this point, hang on, Okay, it's the year 2230. We are 30 years into the game. 122 pops is ridiculous. So, over on spawn, population 56. 21 on the great farm. 21 on the great not farm. The great home. 19, the great mine. This was great. This was just a random Gaia world that happens to have some friendly robots on it. So, yep, synapse drones and brain drones are gaining huge benefits from being here, which is absolutely beautiful. So we're gaining a ton of bloody unity off this world. Also found, just selling right now, a mining world. Asteroid belt, minerals plus 10%. So we're just getting that down. The great mine is going to generate a huge, huge amount of minerals. So economically, we're holding together. Even with like multiple agri worlds, it is difficult to keep up with food just because the population is now exploding on like five, six worlds simultaneously and I can't keep up with the farming. But don't worry about any of that. However, do worry about the, um, yes, small fact that my neighbor, they may only have 43 people on their home world, catastrophically pathetic next to me, but they do have a fleet and they are planning to attack me with it and my fleet is much smaller. We're doing what we can to make it bigger as time goes by. And I have put up some defenses. But it feels like they're not going to be, um, not going to be enough. And also, oh, bloody hell. Defense platforms are expensive these days. I swear they didn't used to cost this much. Okay, hang about. We might be able to do better with some static defense. All right, just, just cancel at least two of these uh, in order to get out some defenses uh, over on this lovely station. That might work too, and still need seven. Just, just give me a few more days. There we go. Get that out in, oh yeah, just two months. We're probably about to die, but if we do, seriously, just, just consider for a second the ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous amount of people that are going to die as we die. It's kind of unlucky. Everyone around us hates us, okay? Not really my fault. This is one of those uh, mean criminal syndicates, so they're just decks. And the ogres next door don't like me much either. They're suspicious, but not really go to war level of suspicious. Though I will say yes, I have realized this is a bit of a slow start because you are just desperately clawing together every bit of food you can get your hands on, and that is tricky. But once you get going, once the world start being big producers, once we start getting everything together, 
you can start having worlds being ludicrously productive so, so fast. Just the number of people flying into every planet is... It's dumb. It's dumb and it's beautiful. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the war. So they want to... Oh, they want to make me a subsidiary. And I'm going to be honest, if you just asked, I probably would have said yes. Okay, we can 100% with the assistance of the station be to any individual fleet they sent to us. If they send to every fleet at once, that's going to be more of an issue, potentially. Then again, I hang about here. They're being... Okay, they're a tiny, tiny bit separated. They're mostly sticking together, but okay, hang on. Could I maybe... Is there any form of distraction I could do here? I mean, I've got reinforcements coming in. 34 and go, and okay. Slow it down. We can do some good damage to this fleet, but these guys should really be staying back as far as possible. So, all right, here we go. Fire has begun. My fleet is weaker, but I have a lot of firepower coming from... The rear. They've got armor, by the way. We don't really, um... We don't really... Oh! They just walked out. Okay. What are you guys doing? You guys are still coming in. Alright, hang about. I think they panicked. Now we can take out this small force without too much... Di well, I say without too much difficulty. I mean, uh, with the assistance of the base and the defense platforms firing in, we should be able... So, oh, my fleet is being absolutely trashed, isn't it? Okay, my fleet is being trashed, yes. But what's left over might be incapable of taking out the defense platform. Which, if my fleet has successfully retreated, might be okay. So, my fleet has GTFO'd. But I think these guys are... Okay, they're pulling out. You guys are about to be destroyed. I think they've taken out maybe one defensive platform. Just the one. And you're about to go down too. I'm not sure. Okay, they've taken out both defensive platforms. Where's my fleet? That is... It's just not around. Okay, not around for the time being. How about we start spamming out some slightly improved blue laser corvettes in the meantime? Because... I'm going to be honest, this is going less badly than I was expecting. Okay, get rid of uh, one in order to build uh, one more defense platform. I mean, there's still a thousand there. We're getting ourselves... Uh, okay, hang about. What's, what's that? There's a tiny force still over in this bit of the world, just sort of uh, hiding. Not really sure what you guys are, are doing. Okay, very peculiar, but they're just, they're just here now. It's all under control. Everything's fine. Okay, you know what? I can out-economy you. Alright, over in the Great Mine, we have got industrial districts going down. We have got beautiful, beautiful alloy foundries. We have got money coming in. I can fund this war. Okay, the fleets are now on the move again. But now they are one, battered, and two, all separated apart. These guys are just here. Don't really know what they're doing. They're just doing their own thing. It's fine. Okay, my fleet is back and it desperately needs some, uh, needs some repairs. Which is fine, we can give them those repairs. The Admiral is still in control, we definitely shouldn't make that the case. We should definitely, like, you know, fire him. We have got more ships being spawned too. Just keep them coming in. Soon, the fleet will return. This station is now... Okay, these guys have returned to the fray. But yes, they're now not in good shape. They're pretty much gone. I do not care about these aliens. It's fine. 1,200 versus their already battered fleet. They just have... Oh, bloody hell. I think we just spawned a brand new uh, defensive platform at a really, really good time mid-fight. They can't break this. And there we go. Last one goes down. And they, oh, they don't like this. They don't like this at all. Oh, and I just wrapped up adaptability, mainly because, yes, it's all about food and habitability. Not a bad thing for this build. And uh, that gives me an ascension perk, meaning new gene tailoring points. And with that, what I can do is tie pitchforks to everybody's arms. I mean, I'm going to be honest, that there, that's... 
That's interesting. So, well, okay, there's a tractor. So, fine. Um, I'm going to genetically modify my people into tractors. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, we do need the food. And here's the fun thing. We don't need to assign that to everywhere. All we need to do is assign it to the agri worlds. If we do that, that's actually, yeah, just like 50 odd people. Okay, it's a bit expensive, but once they're all tractors, oh, flip me, let's get it done. Oh, looky who's decided to come crawling back with their 100% war exhaustion. Okay, honestly, I'm not sure we're really in a position to uh, push much further, especially as uh, my fleet probably can't even break the station that they're building here. So I'm going to call that a huge, huge win for me and my mighty unstoppable economy. Because while that's been going on, I've just been building, oh yeah, all sorts of bits and pieces everywhere. We have just got, oh, the population is rising so fast I can barely keep on top of it. And you know what's really nice? They have just left so, so much debris clogging up my space and now we get to scan it all, learn from it, basically master all the technology that they had and we didn't. Combat computers, a whole bunch of research just for free too, fire control, some good armor. This is not terrible in the slightest. And now we've got a moment's peace, I'd say now would be an excellent time to start converting what I've got into something a little bit more useful in particular. Let's slap down a stronghold on every planet. Blend all that with a little bit of an anchorage. Oh, and the tractor people are complete, which, oh, flip me, look at that food. Look at that food. Oh, the tractor people with their beautiful tractor arms just tractoring away or whatever it is tractors do. Honestly, I don't know that much about farming, but oh my goodness. The food situation has been resolved. So, the year is 2255. Still pretty bloody early on in the game. And at this point, we're already up to over 160 pops. Alright, the alloy income is starting to go bananas. We have got dedicated farming worlds. We're under control. We're not just under control, in fact. We are starting to get seriously rich. Minerals are just flying in. We can afford a pretty bloody major fleet, which has just doubled, tripled, and then kept going in size year on year. The idiots next door, we're now in a very good position to think about making a push on them. And to be honest, this has been a very unlucky start. We've ended up pinned between, yeah, two empires immediately with just no way of getting out from them, which has been a shame. Had we got like anywhere else a bit more open in space, we could have gone way wider. But even then, this is, for this point in the game, a lot of planets and a lot of population. And just so you understand what we're talking about here, I've jumped universe. So remember the Nerd Foundation? This is when we were showing off the new subjugation and vassal mechanics. So this game, it's 2304. So it is 50 years later than my game currently. And guess what the combined total population of my entire empire is at this point in the game? 137. And it looks like, yeah, it's taken me about two, two and a half years to get a new population out. Whereas here, we are just spitting them out once a year everywhere. It is absolutely bloody ridiculous. And I love it. If you could get the right start with this empire, you could just steamroll the entire galaxy. These guys are, are ludicrous. And we could go further. All right, we've created the tractor people to feed our population, but there will be nothing to stop me given I'm playing so wide and thus going to have hyper-specialized planets that we couldn't have the right specialization for every planet. Over on the Great Mine, 15% bonus minerals from all miners. Spectacular. People who are apparently like magnetic, good at working with generators. One planet Give them juiced up power. Make that your training facility for armies. For the great mind where we've got plenty of scientists going on. Augmented intelligence. Brilliant. 
or alternatively, express tradition, given, uh, yeah, that world's actually producing more unity than it is science. So, play this origin, spread as wide as you can, have uh, specialized planets that do everything, and then have every single one of those planets have their own subspecies variant, so they can all be hyper-competent, as well as reproducing at a truly staggering rate. And with that, hopefully you get the point, because if you don't, I really haven't explained it very well. This here is Stellaris Toxoids, and uh, basically, oh yeah, this is not just some extra portraits. They've just added in one a hell of a new origin. And if you can just get past a slightly rocky opening, and you've got some uh, open space to expand into, uh, bloody hell, uh, this is... It's ridiculous, I love it, and I love the fact that Stellaris just keeps getting more and more interesting. It's just a game that I can just keep coming back to over and over again forever. It's absolutely beautiful, well worth a look if you never had before, and uh, I'm going to be honest, though I can't, you know, look at it today, there is uh, one more thing that's pretty new to Stellaris at the moment. And that's the fact there's a brand new setting for Crisis. All. You can now turn on... All the crises, so they fire off sequentially. No more than one happening at once, and when you do that, they get progressively stronger. So, one day, I don't know when, but one day, the impossible run is coming back to Stellaris. With a 25 strength crisis that then gets replaced by an even stronger one, because, oh bloody hell. One day it's gonna happen, and I'm not winning that one. That one is literally impossible, but one day, I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Hopefully, you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs>